No player in the Mid-American Conference caught more touchdowns over the last two seasons than Ball State's Riley Miller. Pretty remarkable when you consider where he came from, but more on that later. Because what's less remarkable, if you know who Miller is, is that none of those touchdowns rank most memorable over five years as a Cardinal. In fact, nothing on the field does. What sticks out most is actually nothing he did at all. Having a little Drew Sally dressed up for me as Halloween, I think that was the coolest thing. That's big. I mean, to see, and, and he's got other kids, you know, to have, I think, other people say nice, nice things about your son and, and to say nice things about you as a player. Um, is probably life lasting. I mean, I think everybody uh, that's been around Riley can attest to what kind of teammate is. He'd give you the shirt off his back if you needed it. He'd, you know, he'd do anything for you. Myself with five boys, I mean, you want your sons to grow up to be like Riley Miller. And if, you, if, you, if they did that, you'd feel like you did a great job as a parent because he's all the right stuff. Which at the end of the day also does include football. If you just watch football, um, you don't know anything about the kid like a, another team would. Uh, he gets open, he makes contested catches, and he's not scared to block. He's as good as anybody in the league. Despite being a 160-pound walk-on when he arrived in 2015, with seldom a football offer to be found. I did recruit him to play D2. We did not offer him a scholarship. Um, interest in full disclosure, though, we didn't offer any wide receivers a scholarship in that class. I had a lot of Division three, like I had Wabash and Nepal recruiting me. They both wanted me to do both, basketball and football. Other than that, really, I got a couple calls from, like, uh, D2 school in Illinois. I remember when we were seniors, he wanted to walk on a Division three basketball school, and it took a lot of convincing for him to play football. I, like, I didn't do all the camps and summer camps. I didn't really send film out. Because Riley was truly a seasonal athlete a throwback in a lot of ways. A skinny kid that was a good good ball player. And when I say ball player, I probably saw him play basketball as much as I did football. There, there's some guys that are uh, really, really athletic and they would kill a 40 or a vertical jump or a combine type scenario. And then there's guys like Riley that whatever he does, he's just really good at it. He, he's, a, he's a natural athlete. Which is why, despite solely the promise of a spot on the roster, Riley bet on himself. I didn't want it any other way, you know? I think I'm, I'm very happy with being a preferred walk-on here and then having to earn a scholarship. And you kind of have to work a little bit harder for what you have to earn. But even then, he couldn't imagine what the future had in store. I'd come to games in high school and middle school and whatnot and, and see all the receivers like the Dante Loves and, and the Dante Ridgeways and, and all those guys that came up before me. So I, I kind of knew what a, a good receiver looked like. And I, I, I knew I was capable. Um, but I, I knew some, some things had to fall my way as well. Looking back from you know, day one, five years ago, just trying to be the first guy in line in the drill, uh, to catching a ball here and there, um, to learn how to block, learn how to lift, learn how to eat. He is the example. It's unbelievable. If you really look at him as a, as a true freshman, even once he's in our program to where he is now, you can never have, have guessed the transformation uh, to the level he's playing at. Ultimately, leading us here. Riley Miller! Congratulations on earning a scholarship. When he said it, like it didn't click with me yet. And by that time, Riley was on my back and, and big mob of guys there. And yeah, the day Riley got put on scholarship was one of my most memorable days at Ball State. And I'm, I'm sure it was probably a little more memorable for him. But just seeing one of your childhood best friends, you know, have that, you know, scholarship given, not given, but he earned it. and. Uh, it was really cool. It was just one of those accomplishments along the way uh, that proved our thinking right uh, as far as what we thought he could do and how he could do it. He wasn't a guy coming and asking for a scholarship, when am I going to get my scholarship? All he did was work. He earned it and that was a great day for all of us when, when uh, we were able to reward him with that. And of course, he's backed it up ever since. He is really, really good. Um, I mean, um, yeah, when you put him in a situation um, and the ball's in the air, you truly believe every time he's going to make the play. What he did from his senior year to now, I mean, it, in high school it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me one bit. All of this, though, makes this a story not about Riley's touchdowns and tough catches. It's a story about everything else everything that made Riley Miller what his coaches call a true Cardinal, and everything they'll miss most now that he's gone. Your stats kind of go away um, as we get older. Uh, what doesn't go away is your relationships and, and who you meet and who you are and, and what they think of you and what they remember. Um, I was here to work hard and give it my all and, and see where, where kind of life took me and where kind of what God's path had for me. 
Um, so I, I, was, I was, I want people to remember how, I mean, I was, hopefully I was a good player, but uh, maybe a better person.